There are several different gradations of beliefs between creationism and evolution. Some of these are compatible with a scientific worldview and some are not. I thought I'd go ahead and cover these briefly to help people to see the distinctions. My categories are sort of broad and can certainly be subdivided or organized differently, but I think that these cover the spectrum pretty well. Young Earth creationism is the belief that organisms were separately created, along with the Earth itself, a few thousand years ago. Now, biology aside for a moment, this contradicts the evidence from radiometric dating, uh, geological processes, the existence of light from distant stars, the Big Bang, and evidence from basically every major field of science that points to the Earth being billions of years old. Now, if this were true, then this is not an insignificant error by any stretch of the imagination. We're talking about several completely de independent dating techniques arriving at dates that all fall within the same order of magnitude while being one million orders of magnitude larger than the age suggested by young Earth creationists. This is like saying that the diameter of Earth is about 12 and a half meters or about 42 feet. Now it's fine to believe this sort of thing but you also have to basically abandon the idea that we can understand anything about the universe from science. Not only that, but you would have to believe that God is intentionally deceiving practically all of the world's scientists by providing all of the corroborating data that they would need to be fooled into thinking the Earth is much older. Old Earth creationism, like Young Earth creationism, is the belief that organisms were separately created. Where this differs from young earth creationism is, as the label suggests, in the age of the earth. Old earth creationists accept the data from all the fields of science that point to an age of earth on the order of billions of years. Where they reject science is when it comes to the evolutionary theory of descent through modification of all life from a common ancestor, aka common descent, often referred to by creationists as macroevolution. Now, I won't go into the evidence of common descent here, but there are plenty of great videos and websites discussing it in depth. I highly recommend Talk Origins 29 Plus Evidences for Macroevolution, the Scientific Case for Common Descent. There's a link on the side. If you don't have time to pour through all of the information contained on that link, check out my video, Gulop, A Test of Common Descent, also linked on the side. Contrary to what the Discovery Institute would like you to believe, intelligent design is another form of creationism though much more vague in its assertions than the two previously mentioned. There are no claims about the age of Earth, and no specific claims about what precisely was created. However, like all forms of creationism, intelligent design, or ID, asserts that certain organisms and or structures belonging to them must have been created by an intelligent being with incredible power. ID proponents will claim that they are not making a religious argument, but I have yet to meet an ID proponent that thought an alien was the designer. It's easy to see why. If aliens were the designers, then what designed these necessarily complex beings? Now, the same argument can be used against God as the designer, but this is where the idea of supernatural powers comes into play. Once you call on supernatural forces that cannot be comprehended by mankind, then you have effectively thrown science out of the window and completely given up on it. It's easy to take any phenomenon, weather, the movement of the planets, disease, etc., and claim that some being with power beyond our understanding is responsible for it. People have been doing it for thousands of years. It just isn't science. It makes no real testable predictions and is basically just a way of giving up on our ability to understand the natural world. The term theistic evolution can mean a lot of different things. Here I'm referring to biological evolution subtly guided by a divine hand. Unlike the beliefs I've already mentioned, theistic evolution is compatible with common descent and a scientific viewpoint. Basically, someone who believes in theistic evolution thinks that God has a plan for life that he enacts through natural forces. Evolution is then guided by God, doing things like altering the outcomes of seemingly random particle interactions so as to create specific mutations. This provides the raw material for processes like natural selection to build complexity. Since the interactions being manipulated are otherwise random, there are no material ways to detect this manipulation. However, given time, such manipulation could have drastic effects. The final category, where my own beliefs lie, is naturalistic evolution. For all practical purposes, as defined here, there is no real difference between theistic and naturalistic evolution. 
The only actual difference is that in a purely naturalistic universe, God or any other supernatural forces do not manipulate things. That doesn't mean that someone who accepts a naturalistic worldview is necessarily an atheist. God could still have created such a universe, knowing very well the outcome, and could even have set things up in the beginning, for instance at the Big Bang, so that they would turn out the way he wanted them to. When debating someone about a potentially sensitive topic like evolution, it is often useful to find out which category the person you are debating falls into. It can help you determine which tactics to use. For a young Earth creationist, you might point out that if they are right, then the light we see from stars and nebulas, in many cases, comes from objects that never existed. For an old Earth creationist, I like to point out the genetic evidence for common descent. Intelligent design creationists are trickier because many of them accept some common descent, just not for certain complex traits. So I usually ask them for examples of things that they don't think could have evolved and try to give evidence of plausible scenarios whereby they could. Another tactic is to show all of the intermediates we know for other complex traits. Finally, Understanding these belief categories can help you to suggest to a creationist another category that might help them to better square their beliefs with science and the power that a scientific understanding of the universe provides. I want as many people as possible to understand and accept evolution, and that means helping believers to see that a universe that operates under its own rules is far more beautiful and magnificent than one that requires its creator to constantly break those rules just to get things to work the way he wants it to. Newton figured this out long ago when, he came, when it came to understanding the movement and shape of the planets, and an acceptance of the theory of evolution is simply the next step. Peace.